Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Key Concepts Associated with Leadership. This is Lecture B, Emotional Intelligence. The objectives for this unit, Key Concepts Associated with Leadership, are to describe and discuss the role of authority in the HIT environment, compare and contrast recognized versus expert authority in context with the healthcare environment. Explain creativity's role in healthcare. Explain the importance of recognizing and managing the cross-cultural organization. Define emotional intelligence. List and describe the four competencies in social intelligence. Define motivation in the context of the current HIT environment. Distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Describe the role of motivation in group dynamics. Daniel Goleman, an author well known for his writing on emotional intelligence, credits the term emotional intelligence to work done by psychologist Jack Mayer of the University of New Hampshire and Peter Solovey of Yale University in 1990. In their definition, emotional intelligence is the ability for someone to process both their own emotions and those of others. Sometimes this is referred to as EQ, or emotional quotient. They distinguished emotional intelligence from cognitive intelligence, which establishes how people will be successful in scholarly work. Cognitive intelligence is offered measured through IQ tests. There are two seminal texts about emotional intelligence written by Daniel Goleman, which you may want to study further. These books are titled Emotional Intelligence and Working with Emotional Intelligence. Goleman argues that certain social competencies have a bigger influence than cognitive intelligence in determining success in life and in the workplace. Goleman also states that our social interactions operate as modulators, something like interpersonal thermostats that continually reset key aspects of our brain function as they orchestrate our emotions. In the next few slides, we'll explore some of the subcategories or competencies of social intelligence in a little more depth. Goldman suggests that there are four competencies in social intelligence. These are self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and social skills. Let's look at each of these in detail. The first competency we'll examine is self-awareness. Managers who excel at self-awareness were seen by their bosses, peers, and direct reports as having an accurate and honest view of their own strengths and weaknesses. Managers who are self-aware often have higher impulse control and tolerance for stressful situations. In other words, the self-aware manager is one who has learned the art of counting to ten before making a rash or regrettable decision. A self-aware manager knows where the triggers are. The motto of the self-aware manager is, Know thyself. Managers who are prone to outbursts of anger or frustration are typically perceived as lacking in self-awareness. Let's take a look at the value of developing self-awareness in the healthcare field. Healthcare, as we've stated, moves very quickly. Adding technology to an environment or changing workflows can add a layer of complexity that some find unmanageable. Change is uncomfortable for some people in healthcare because they feel like they're losing control of a process or technology that they've already mastered. It brings about uncertainty, and that can cause people to be defensive or protective of their current way of working. These people may lash out at the change agent, implementation manager, in a meeting over a decision, or have a heated debate about why they should not be expected to change. The self-aware manager will understand that she cannot take the bait during intense discussions, even though they may become personal. Self-awareness requires that one sense and even anticipate negative behavior and then act rationally, 
even though those around her may not. The manager who's mastered self-awareness should practice listening without taking things personally. In other words, have thick skin. Becoming self-aware requires practice and may not develop overnight. Prior to going to a meeting which may become heated, anticipate the criticism and practice your reaction by acknowledging the criticizer's frustration and offering an objective solution whenever possible. The second competency, social awareness, includes empathy, organizational awareness, and service orientation. These skills collectively deal with sensing emotions and understanding perspectives other than one's own. This is sometimes referred to as reading the tea leaves or reading between the lines. Being socially aware requires the ability to build social networks and to have a firm understanding of the organizational culture. Leaders with good social awareness skills are adept at meeting others' needs, whether they be patients, co-workers, or decision makers. Many times, individuals who are responsible for putting in a new IT system are contract or temporary employees. They have highly specialized skills, but skills that may be used during only one point in the project. It's crucial that these individuals have a sense of social awareness. Understanding the needs of the end users requires that these temporary workers truly understand the business or clinical need driving the organizational change before making any recommendations or changes. In other words, heeding the advice of Stephen Covey to seek first to understand, then to be understood, will be of paramount importance. The second part of social awareness in the healthcare environment is understanding that clinicians are in an industry that serves patients and directly affects the outcome of their lives and their families' lives. This is a huge responsibility, and most clinical education programs, medical school, nursing school, etc., place heavy emphasis on this aspect of training. Individuals new to healthcare will need to recognize this difference every time they go to a new organization that has this service mentality. A leader with a good sense of self-management will have strong impulse control. This person is cool under pressure, but doesn't hide emotions when they're warranted. They're trustworthy. You know where you stand with them. Leaders with solid self-management skills will be able to manage both themselves and their responsibilities and are excellent change managers. They are adaptive and ready to seize an opportunity if the right one presents itself. Leading change in an organization requires understanding human behavior as well as an abundance of patience and willingness to listen and learn from others. If people believe that you are listening to them and truly understand their problems, they'll probably be more likely to trust you. Remember, healthcare workers feel called to help other people, and they usually have a decent system in place to do this. If you're an outsider, don't expect to instantly gain their trust. You must show them that you're willing to help them think of creative ways to improve or change what they're already doing pretty well. The last thing you must know about the healthcare industry is that it is very goal driven. Physicians, nurses, staff people, administrators all share common organizational goals, and they typically aim to exceed their target goals, not just meet them. Helping a project team set realistic and intermittent goals that people can believe in can help ease the anxiety that sometimes accompanies changing the way people do things. Social skills are what really separate the true leaders from the wannabe leaders. Leaders with strong social skills have mastered the art of persuasiveness without strong-arming. They communicate through thoughtful interactions and by listening to others. These leaders are adept at bringing up a new idea and getting people behind it. Good social skills allow a leader to nurture the skills of others, even when some of those skills aren't always learned the easy way. Leaders with good social skills build lifelong bonds.
Remember that in a hospital setting, there will always be an organizational structure with appointed authoritative leaders in the executive or C-suite, the CEO, CFO, CIO, etc. But there are many different care teams or constituent groups in the hospital, like the nurses or the surgeons or the maintenance staff. Any one of these groups may hold different types of influence within an organization. A resource with good social skills will recognize that communication will need to be tailored to the needs of multiple constituent groups, not just the person or persons who have the sanctioned authoritative title. The importance of good communication skills cannot be underestimated in the healthcare environment. Because decisions in healthcare can be the difference between life and death, communication skills should be factual and succinct. They don't need to be militaristic. But clinicians are usually always in a time crunch, and meetings take them away from patient care, putting them further behind. Practicing communication skills is of utmost importance to the project leader and his or her staff. In this Bringing It Home slide, we'll look at how emotional intelligence may play a role in the success or failure of a project. Research actually shows that emotional intelligence increases with age and that some people are genetically predisposed to have high levels of emotional intelligence. This is good news and bad news. It means that everyone can learn some forms of emotional intelligence, but it just might take some people longer than others. A quote that has been attributed to the author Aldous Huxley puts the idea of emotional intelligence in perspective. Experience is not what happens to you. It's how you interpret what happens to you. If you want to hone your emotional intelligence skills, keep a journal at night in which you reflect on your day. What triggered your emotions? Who kept their cool during the pressure cooker of a meeting to discuss the lapsing deadlines and budget overruns? Is there anything about this person's behavior that you can emulate. Finally, to quote Scarlett O'Hara, tomorrow is another day. Maybe today wasn't your day and you didn't hit the mark on one or more of the four competencies in Goldman's emotional intelligence model. But there's always room to improve and you can start that improvement tomorrow. This concludes Lecture B of Key Concepts Associated with Leadership. In summary, emotional intelligence is different from cognitive intelligence and can be developed as a leadership skill through experience. The four competencies of self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and social skills contribute to successful leadership.